Well, hi, I'm back, and this is my slightly less messy workspace from the previous review, or actually it was a first look, of the Port Keys BM5 Mark III uh, monitor. And I haven't seen any reviews for this yet, so I'm gonna kinda do, I guess, a little overview and a, and a review of the unit. Although I haven't really been able to use it out in the field just yet. I will this weekend. But I will take you through the menus and show you what is going on with that thing. Uh, first of all, the box, it came to me all crumpled and screwed up, so that's a thing. Um, inside the box, it really depends on which skew you get because um, sometimes you can get it with different cables or whatever, but inside the box, not really seeing what's inside the box on this monitor or on this camera over here, but you get a power cord, which is, uh, it's fine um, to compare it to the BM5 Mark II that I also have. Um, it's just a little bit different. The, the cables are, this is just a regular old rubber coated cable. Uh, this for the D tab, by the way. And this one is almost like a fabric, so I don't know. I don't know, it might be a little stiffer, not really sure, but anyway. And then you get a uh, USB to US, USB-C to USB, uh, what is that thing called? Mini, a mini USB. Um, you also get a uh, USB um, mini to, I don't know, an eighth inch or a control port for, for some cameras. And then you also get, uh, this is a power, it's a power pin. Um, a four pin power limo to, uh, I guess this is just a barrel plug to something. I don't really know. And then you get a USB with all the documentation on in, uh, in English and in Chinese. So, you know, there's that. So that's what, that's what comes in this box. Um, depending on which exact, uh, setup you get, maybe they'll come with different cables for your specific camera or whatever. Um, I obviously bought it specifically for uh, the Blackmagic cameras that uh, control wirelessly through this thing right here. This is the, the BT-1, um, and uh, this one is broken or burned out or whatever. So I explained in my other video that I used to run, used to have the Port Keys BM3, uh, BM5 Mark II with the, the Bluetooth module and this fried on me. So we're working, I'm working with port keys right now to see if I can't get a replacement, but it's out of warranty, so we'll see, I don't know. But anyway, it seems like it burned out the Bluetooth module as well. That stinks, but anyway, I got another one of those coming. So let's go ahead and um, turn this on and we will uh, we'll plug it into the camera and um, everything will be awesome. So, um, Really quickly, uh, I said, I, I went through all the main differences in a different video from the BM5 Mark II to the BM5 Mark III. The biggest difference that you'll notice is the screen. Um, before, the screen was this plasticky um, surface that had a big old, uh, I don't know if that's plastic or metal, bezel around it. Um, but uh, now the screen is completely edge-to-edge uh, -edge glass and it's better? I don't know. I, I don't know if it's better or not. I believe it's the exact same screen because it's got the same specs at 2200 nit. Very, very bright. Probably too bright. Um, if you turn it up all the way, you kind of lose the, the picture, but we'll see. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and plug this right into uh, the, the uh, Sony a7S Mark III right here. Um, and you'll see that it right away pops up with uh, the monitor here. Um, okay, so I'll quickly go over what the menus do, and to get into the menu system, you really just tap it, and that shrinks down the 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 video into a smaller box, and then you have all these uh, things on the side that you can add. Or so we're not going to get there just yet. If you swipe to the left, swiping to the left gives you basically the the setup menu, or the um, I don't know, yeah, basically the setup menu. So at the top here, you have your screen brightness, contrast, chroma, sharpness, and then you can slide over here and you can actually change the temperature of the monitor, which is kind of nice, I guess. You've got anamorphic modes in here, um, all the way to 2.0, ta-da. Um, 
oh, to 2.35 uh, anyway. Um, okay, and then your next set is uh, to choose between HDMI and SDI, and then you can output LUTs, I guess, if you have a LUT in the camera that you're using, and then you use the, uh, well, there is no HDMI out. I have no idea why that's there. I don't know, it might be for something else. Well, not really sure. Um, here you've got your controls. If you wanted to mount this upside down or something like that, you could flip the thing around. Oop, now what I've done, there we go. Um, so you can flip that around to your liking. Uh, next we have uh, um, what, what language the uh, controls are in. Um, OSD, transparency, and uh, system reset, and then the fan speed control. Um, we'll just do a really quick uh, test of the fan speed. So it, right now it's on low fan. I'm gonna hold it right up to my microphone. You might be able to hear the fans from my computer behind me more. Now it's on middle. So you can hear it, but it's not too annoying. And then high, that's pretty annoying. So if you're gonna have a boom mic next to you, and that probably not such a good idea to have it on high. All right, so moving on, um, we'll slide over. Um, there's gesture zooming. Um, that is so that if you want to zoom in to the image, um, that you're looking, I'll turn this upside down so that you can see it better. Um, if you wanted to zoom in, you can, you can do that with a pinch zoom. Oop, let's get back to there. Okay. Um, and then I guess you can, uh, the screen calibration comes from the factory, I guess. I turn that off and it's very green. I turn it back on and it's normal. Not really sure what that's all about. And then at the bottom here is your LUTs. You can, you can import, uh, your, your LUTs into the, monitor so you can always see what it's going to be. That's if you're getting a clean non-LUT uh, image from your camera to the monitor, I suppose. All right. Um, now, if we swipe to the right, um, that's going to give you all your picture uh, helper things. So if I were to turn on this, this is the, uh, the focus assist. And we're going to come back to the focus assist in just a second because um, it, there's, it's worth talking about. And then here we've got false color. Um, there are zebras, um, and by the way, it's it's anything you want. So I only have the ones that I want in here. I've got a uh, a center thing. I've got you know, my grid lines. Um, but if you press this, or and this is also a uh, histogram on top. If you press this little plus button, it gives you all the choices of things that you might want to put on that screen: vector scopes, uh, RGB parades. You literally have so many things that you can put on here. Um, one of the new things that are available in this Mark III unit that was not in the Mark II is this image overlay. And what that does is you can put a playback image on this and, and save it, I guess. Um, and then it will stay there as an overlay and you change the transparency based on how whatever you want. Um, and then you can line up your next shot on top of it to make sure that you're gonna be, you know, exactly where you need to be. I don't know who needs this. I don't think I do, but it's there, which is kind of cool. Um, also, you can set up your function keys. That are these four function keys on the top here. That was the same that was on the Mark II. And that is literally just, uh, let me get out of here for a second. Um, so if you come back here and you want your full screen, um, you can press like things like, F1, and I have it set to false color. F2 is my uh, focus peaking, um, stuff like stuff like that. Um, so let's quickly go back to focus peaking. This is actually uh, one of my one of the better things about this Mark III unit. So I'm going to turn focus peaking on, and then hopefully we're going to be able to. I'm going to be able to show you this. Okay. So the focus peaking is excellent on this monitor. Um, I'm gonna go into uh, my focus here. That's not focus, there it is. Some manual focus. And I'm gonna just start focusing around and you can see how well it locks on things. 
it's it does a really really fantastic job of showing you exactly what's in focus whereas the mark ii did an okay job but this mark three is fantastic you can actually and this isn't the greatest light in here either i mean I know on the Mark II, if you didn't have great light, this thing struggled to show you what was in focus and what wasn't. This is great. So back, even back there where it's completely darked out, look at that. I mean, it just goes right and, and tells you exactly what's in focus over there. That's you guys right there. Anyway, um, so that's probably the best thing about this Mark III is the focus peaking it is it is truly uh amazing i think anyway okay so let's move on a little bit and here's here's another uh here's another thing for the menus if you say uh oh i fell out of that no let's go back to there okay so if you want to change the settings on uh, how sensitive it is. You just hold it and then swipe it to the right a little bit and then you get all these choices down here. You get the, the, you get to turn it on and off. You can turn the sensitivity up. If, uh, I said in the other video, if you turn it up to 10, everything's red, which is dumb, which it is. Um, so I keep it relatively low. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty great. You can change it to blue or green or white. Um, I leave it on red for, for most things. Um, and then you can just uh, accept it. So, and that's for anything. If you, if you like, um, let me turn that off for a second so you can see better. Um, this is the center point and um, I can move my center point or my crosshair around, change the color of it, whatever. Um, same thing with the grids, turn the grids on. I can choose, you know, lots of grids. I can have just a big old bullseye in the middle there, rule of thirds whatever so that's um, a base basic idea of your um, of your system menu here then if you swipe up um, this gives you uh, the motor control for focusing um, now I don't use it but uh, you can get a cable that can run to your uh, tilt uh, focusing motors and then you can use this down here to, to focus in and out. You can set uh, focus points at A and B and then just hit you know A to B when you're doing your focus pulling so you don't need a focus puller. Use a focus puller just you know save the jobs. Um, and then if you swipe down now you're given you're getting into all of your camera controls. So if you are connected to the controls of your camera um, either through bluetooth or through a cable that's where you're going to get all the control through your monitor uh, so you don't have to mess with your camera and and stuff like that so it's stuff like white balance so you can do change your tint you can actually change the record mode so if you're doing black magic you want to go to black magic raw and you can just go to all those things here would be the bluetooth if mine worked i I am getting a new transmitter. I should have waited to make this video so I could show you how it actually works, but I, who's got time for that? Anyway, um, and then you can change your, uh, the actual um, resolution that you're shooting in. You can, you know, all kinds of things. You can literally change the focus if your camera supports that. Um, and then obviously ISO, you know, your frame rate, stuff like that. So that's all good right there. Here's what's interesting and frustrating is that in your camera controls, um, in your camera controls menu, you can't start recording. So for instance, um, if I, if I were to swipe up, I have a record button here. If I swipe left, no. If I swipe right, no. If I swipe down, it's like, what the heck dudes? Like. Oh, I do have it. Okay, so I just couldn't be on there. So in some, whoops, on some things, like if it if it needs too much space, like the white balance, if you're on white balance, you, you lose your record button. Um, but on focus and on ISO, record button, everything's fine. Um, it's really strange where the where the record button shows up and where it doesn't. And something that annoys me is that there's no such thing as going full screen and having a record button on there. So 
tough beans, really. I mean, it's, it's, it's a little annoying um, that you have to, you can't be in your, uh, your, your helpers menu. You have no, you know, no record button there. At least I don't think so. I don't think you can do, no, I, you can't add a record button onto there anywhere, which kind of is a bummer. Um, whoops, that's a false color. And so we turn all the helpers off for, for right now. Um, and again, you gotta swipe to a screen that you're not really gonna use all that much, or you can swipe down and stay on focus and maybe zoom. Yeah, you can stay on zoom and iris and shutter and ISO, but everything else, everything else you lose your record button, which is dumb in my opinion. I feel like you should always have a record button in the pro why did it, why did it do that? Okay. So in the prior, uh, in the prior firmware, you would have a screen where you would have a little red button up in the corner right here, and it would always be there if you wanted it there, um, and you would swipe through menus just by swiping back and forth. This, no, you don't. You don't get to do that. You have to, you have to literally tap the screen to get it to shrink down a little bit, and it steals some of your real estate, and it gets confusing and all that stuff. I wish I could just look at the full screen. And it's already only a five inch monitor, so it's not that big to begin with. I've gotta say that I really do like this monitor. I mean, I liked it so much I bought it after this one fried on me, so that's gotta say something. Pressing down the menu button just kinda does the same thing. I guess you can fly through this stuff if you want to, but who, who, who wants to use the menu button when you have a touch screen, you can just touch the screen. Um, so the unit gets a little warm. I've only been, I've only had it on for maybe 10 minutes now and it's, it's warm to the touch. I mean, it's not dangerously hot or anything like that, but it's, you know, it's something. So yeah, so this is, uh, this has been, I guess, the overview of the Port Keys BM5 Mark III monitor. Uh, it's a great monitor. It's $500 just for the monitor, and I guess you get your choice of cables to work with whatever uh, 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 camera you're gonna be working with. Um, that's what I can say if you're looking to do the Bluetooth with your Blackmagic cameras. This is an extra $120. Used to be 100, I don't know why it went up so much, but now it's $120. Um, it does come in a nice case. This is the case that, and they're the same case, but it does come with a very nice carrying case that is a, like a little mini Pelican case. Um, and it goes right in there, snaps all up. Uh, I've never used this case for Ever, never, I've never used it. So usually when I build up my rig, um, I build it up before I get to a set and everything is all like built together and, and kind of protected on its own. So it, I've never used this to transport. I used use it to store the broken one in, which sucks. And that's it. It takes uh, your Sony L batteries, which is extremely convenient. It'll probably run for about, uh, I'm, I'm gonna estimate about two hours on one of these 970 batteries. Uh, yeah, so make sure you have a couple of those. But again, it also um, is powered by a DTAP to a four pin limo. And in my box, I also got a four pin limo to barrel plug. So as long as it's getting like between 7.4 and like 12 volts, I think that's what it said on here. I can double check between seven and 24 volts, is that right? That's what it says. What is interesting, and this supports my theory that there's a more powerful processor inside, is that this one says that it's maximum, um, it's maximum power consumption is 13 watts. Is it gonna do it there? Yep, like 13 watts, I believe it says in there. And then this one says that it's maximum power capacity or consumption is 16 watts. So that's telling me that there's something in there that is taking more power. And I'm really guessing it's a, a stronger or a more powerful processor that's 
working on those uh, focus peaking um, algorithms to maybe process the information faster and make it just easier to focus. So uh, I'm gonna give this a win. Um, for $500, it's easily the best monitor I've ever used. Um, I kinda wish that it didn't have this edge to edge glass because this one just seemed like it was much more robust and this one feels like a modern cell phone. If you drop it, it would, it would shatter the glass on top. Um, what you can also see, I don't know if you can or not. Yeah, there we go, is how just just smudgy and, and, and fingerprinty this whole thing gets. But good as new. Well, not really, but you know, you use it, wipe it off. There you have it. Um, that was the Port Keys BM5 Mark III uh, monitor, and I like it. Thanks.